Last week, NYPD officials arrested a postal worker after the postal worker had yelled at the cops as they were driving because they were about to hit his postal truck. Now, after that happened, they got out of their uh, police cruiser and then they proceeded to arrest him. We have video of the incident. Take a quick look. Is that New York? Yeah. That's, That's some good stuff in that. Yeah. So the police lieutenant that was overseeing these police officials has now had his badge taken away and also his gun taken away after an investigation found that that postal worker did nothing wrong. He wasn't resisting arrest. If anything, if he was resisting in any way, shape, or form, it's because he literally did nothing wrong. The only thing he did was yell at the cops and tell them that they were about to hit his truck. So he was trying to avoid an accident. Cops didn't like that, and they arrested him. Now, Lieutenant Luis Machado was placed on modified duty in connection with the embarrassingly volatile clash between cops and postal employee Glenn Grays in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. The four plainclothes cops got out of the car, slapped him with handcuffs, frisked him, and carted him off to the 71st Precinct State House, uh, where he was charged with resisting arrest. Now, the amazing thing is, even after the police lieutenant was found uh, in the wrong in this particular case, you have Patrick Lynch, uh, who is with the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, saying, no one ever has the right to resist arrest. Compliance is not optional. Like basically, unless you're like, oh, please, officer, take me. Oh, that feels good. No, a little yeah. tighter. Then you're resisting, resisting arrest. If you're like, this is, this is crap. So, no, this is dumb. I want a lawsuit. Like that's suddenly considered resisting. So he hit. He hit their car, or he did not hit their car. No one hit anyone. No one hit any car. No, the cops. Yelled. Nothing <laughs> happened really. The cops. Nothing running. happened really. Okay, so then he'll. You know, if that's that's going to be good for him because he's going to get lawsuit. Um, he will make some money. <coughs> so first of all, he his fiance is a, uh, is training to be a cop. He's got nothing against the cops except for the fact that they do this every once in a mm -hmm. while. Right. And um, and. He, the cops are driving. He's not driving at all, so it couldn't possibly be his fault. When the cops almost clip his postal truck. van truck, right? He's like, "Hey guys, can you watch it?" They're like, "That's it. Let's go arrest the guy." Oh, right? Oh, yeah. And so the reason they start saying stop resisting, when you can see on tape, he's not at all resisting, right? Is because so that they could later have Patrick Lynch come out and say, "No one ever has a right to resist arrest. Compliance is not optional." And that's their out. That's their out right. for everything, right? But we have eyes. We saw the guy. He puts his arms behind his back. Keeps saying, "I'm not resisting," That's right? What I'm saying, yeah. And and so, it, look. The, some of the video is funny, but the overall the issue is, of course, incredibly serious. And this happens all the time. Uh, overall, with cops abusing their authority, it happens to minorities disproportionately. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people are tired of it. And the good news here, as Anna pointed out, is NYPD in what's in forever, like they have they have been doing stop and frisk uh, for all this time, but for the first time in a long time, is saying no, this is not right. Uh, you can't just go arrest a guy because he yelled at you, especially when you almost hit his car, right? Yeah. And, and he's a government worker; he's not doing anything wrong. It's I mean, just, yeah. It's listen, if he weren't authority. black, this wouldn't have happened. I mean, I think that's pretty clear. Um, but again. Just our relationships with the police are so, if you do not shut up and you can't explain anything that you're doing, I mean, I know this is, this is a different case, but when are we going to actually sort of, you know, calm the F down a little bit and when are cops are gonna actually get some sensitivity training when it comes to like, I'm just a human and I'm gonna tell you what I was doing, I'm a postal worker. Right, Like, I mean, I don't understand what the guy was supposed to do. First of all, I don't know if this would have happened if it was a black guy or a white guy. I mean, the reality is if you utter a word, a single word to cops that they don't like, they're gonna come after you and that's right. exactly what happened in this case. They're about to hit his car. 
He told them, hey, I don't know exactly what he said word for word, but he yelled at them so they don't clip his car. That's the most understandable thing in the world. If these police officials are so damn sensitive that they can't handle someone yelling at them to avoid an accident, they shouldn't be cops. By the way, I should correct myself. Uh, Grace's fiance is not training to be a cop. She is a cop. She's a city cop. And so I'm sure that Grace thinks that there are good cops out there, right? He's married to one. Right. Yeah. So, um, and when uh, Francesca talks about sensitivity training, we're not talking about being sensitive to the criminals, right? We're talking about being sensitive uh, to the community because you're supposed to be serving the community. And so that means everybody in the community, black, white, Latino, etc. And don't just assume everybody's a bad guy. Yes, they, uh, Jamie, of course, they deal with a lot of bad guys, and that ain't easy, right? Yeah. Um, but you also have to deal with a lot of people in the community who are innocent. That's why you need the training to be able to tell the difference, because that's an important difference if you're yeah. here to protect us.